So we're going to assess the volar wrist, the, the few of the tendons, and we're also going to talk about the median nerve and assessment of carpal tunnel syndrome. So to pick up the median nerve, what I do is I just find the wrist crease and place my probe on in transverse. And we have our median nerve sitting just below our fascia with our deep flexor tendons of the fingers below. If we follow that median nerve up, we can see it fall down in between the muscle bellies of flexor dig superficialis and flexor dig profundus. So it's up through the distal forearm here is where we want to get our first measurement. So we'll just freeze a little image there. We'll bring up our measurement, our area trace, and we'll bring that over. And we want to just do a little trace around that nerve. So there we go. So we've got our area, we've got our, our baseline for what our nerve should be. And then what we'll do is we'll follow that nerve down towards our carpal tunnel. And what we want to find is our maximum area. So we want to compare the, the maximum cross-sectional area in the distal forearm to the maximum area around the carpal tunnel. It's usually at that proximal carpal tunnel just before it enters, before it flattens down into the carpal tunnel. So we're looking around this area and we're going to take another little measurement around the nerve there and we can compare those two measurements. So we can also want to be aware of just continuing our assessment of that median nerve down through to the distal carpal tunnel. So as we come out just at the other end of the distal tunnel, just assessing for any thickening of the nerve as it comes down uh, at the distal end. So we want to compare this normal measurement of our nerve to our maximum measurements through here to assess for our carpal tunnel. So just below the nerve there, just give your fingers a little wiggle. Big wiggle now. Yep. Even bigger, get them moving around. There are flexor tendons of the fingers. Cheers, relax. So we have our, in our carpal tunnel, we have our flexor dig superficialis, our flexor digit tie profundus, and we also have our flexor pollicis longus just sitting over on the side. That runs around and we can see that flexor dig profundus, uh, flexor pollicis longus sitting in the thena evidence there quite easy to visualise there. So that, they are our tendons that live in the carpal tunnel. As we continue on out from the carpal tunnel, we come down through into the palm and we can see our flexors of the fingers. So our flexor digiti superficialis sitting over our flexor dig, dig profundus. As we continue down, we come down over our MCP joints and this is where our A1 pulley lives, just sitting up over the bowler plate of our MCP joint there. And this is our, going to be our common spot for our trigger fingers. So we can open that up and along. We can see that tendon gliding through that pulley really nicely. And this is where we will do our trigger finger injection. So what we do is we'll just come in short axis on there again. There's our pulley. What we want to do is we want to get that tendon right over to the edge of the probe. We want to be out right over the edge there and we want to be able to have that nice and close. As you can see on either side of the tendon we have a little neurovascular bundle. This is what we've got to be aware of when we're doing our injection. So we want to slide over right to the edge and we're able to get our needle and just drop down in there. We also have the option of uh, being in long axis on our tendon and just falling in again and just dropping in on top of the tendon there. And there are two ways of injecting our trigger finger. If we come back up to our median nerve, we'll just discuss injection median nerve. And a nice simple approach for the median nerve is the, from the ulnar aspect of the wrist. So we can see here we've got our radial artery, our median nerve and our ulnar artery there. So we want to be aware of these arteries so we'll get our median nerve just towards the right hand side of that screen, just moving across the, the transducer across radially. And again, putting our needle in, just guiding it down and just under our nerve. And what we, we like to do is just as we're getting close to the nerve is just inject a little injectate and just try to push that nerve away and get a little bit of spacing. And then we can advance our needle in to that space. So, as we get close, a little inje injection 
just to push that nerve away, open it up, and then we can continue uh, with our needle under the nerve, injecting as we go, just to push the nerve away. So that's a nice little way of doing our median nerve injection. The other thing we'll just touch on is our first carpometacarpal joint. And, and this is a really common joint for our osteoarthritis. Assessment of osteoarthritis, I like to go right from the bowler aspect of the joint. This is where I find we'll see those large osteophytes and capsular thickening, much easier to appreciate than the volar aspect. So when we're assessing, we get this lovely uh, acoustic window of our thin eminence over the top, and we're able to assess that joint margin and capsule. That's a nice, easy way of assessing that joint. When I come to injections of the first carpal metacarpal joint, I like to approach it similar to what we do at AC joints. So I like to, I'll find my metacarpal, and I'll follow it proximally until I fall into the joint space. Just there, we've got our big open joint space, and then I come on to trapezium. So metacarpal, joint space, trapezium, and we just fall back in, needle from the side, and we just drop down into the joint through the muscle. It's a nice acoustic window. We're usually able to pick up that needle really well through the muscle there, so that's a nice simple way of injecting that joint. So that's our bowler wrist. Mm -hmm.